Are you worried that you might invest in a product only to find out that the market suddenly got saturated between the time you did product research and when you launched your product? If not, you should be. As Amazon selling gains popularity, it's becoming increasingly important to your success to think outside the box to find slightly different methods to do product research. This is to prevent yourself from seeing the same products that everyone else is seeing, especially when everyone tends to be using the same product research filters and tools. In this video, I'll share with you the simple product research methods that I actually use to find the products that I'm selling on Amazon. But first, my name is Crescent, and if this is our first time meeting, welcome to my channel. My passion is sharing tips and strategies on how you can create a successful Amazon FBA private label business. So if you enjoy videos like this, or especially if you've been around my channel, consider subscribing. All right, let's dive right in. So most people are doing product research using a product research tool, such as a web app like the one Jungle Scout has. If you're not familiar with what the web app is, it's a database that contains all of the products in the Amazon marketplace. And the idea here is that you can set filters and specific categories to find products that match the exact criteria that you're looking for. And the issue here is that when people are doing product research, beginners tend to use the same filters and categories that they learned online, and they're not thinking outside the box. Therefore, everyone's finding and seeing the exact same products. And the problem occurs is when good ones pop up, beginners are all getting into the same products at the same time, and that's when beginners discover that once their product launches, several other sellers launched with them at the same time, and suddenly that niche is saturated. So if you use Jungle Scout Web App or other product databases, you're probably familiar with this screen here. It shows you your categories, as well as a list of filters that you can set specific criteria for. Now, the most filters that people are concerned with is the price, the number of sales per month, and the reviews. All right, now typically you wanna set the price within a range of $15 to $50, and that's because you wanna make sure that there's enough profit there. Anything less than $15, Amazon fees will eat into those profits, so there won't be much money left for you to make for profit. And typically you wanna keep the price under $50 so that it's an impulse buy. Otherwise, anything over $50, people will tend to do more research and think about the purchase. Sales, this is a number you're gonna to have to figure out based on your monthly profit targets, okay? And a typical number is around 250 to 300 units per month as a minimum. And reviews is where you judge the level of competition within a niche. And you typically wanna look for seven out of the top 10 listings to have less than 75 reviews. So we have a cap here of 75. And this is what most beginners are using as their starting setup for product research. Now here's where you wanna think outside the box and differentiate a little bit so that you find different products. Now if we were to do a search using this default search criteria, you'll notice if you take a quick glance at the products that you see here. Okay, now, Everyone's seeing those products. What can you do to differentiate a little bit? For me, the best place to look is at the borderline of the price ranges. Now, most people are gonna look right at the whole number, usually at tens or multiples of five, for example, 15 and 50. So what I like to do is I'll search right at the borderline of these specific price points. So I'll look, instead of $15, I'll look at 14, make up a number 57, to $14.99, okay? And the idea here is instead of seeing all the products cut right at 15, I'm gonna look at the borderline products that can still make money, but people aren't looking at. So you'll notice that originally there was 26,000 results, but if I do a search now, suddenly now there's only 2,500 products, and if you look at the results, these are new products that showed up right? It's not the same ones that other people are seeing. Now, the intent of this video isn't to actually do product research, so I'm not going to go through and try to find anything for you. The idea here is to show you different methods so that you can find products that no one else is looking, for, looking at. Now, with the same mentality, so instead of looking at the bottom of the price range, you can look at the top. So instead of $50, I'm going to look at uh, 5001 and maybe 5400. 
97. Okay, again, you can make, a, make up a number here for the top of the range. And you'll see a slightly different search results for those products. And again, it's a much smaller and manageable results for you to look at. And again, you gotta think outside the box here. I'm just giving you two examples of 15 and 50, but a lot of people do research at the other five, multiples of five and, and multiples of 10 whole number price ranges. So another good place to look is right around $25. So look from 24.27 through 24.99, okay? So that'll be people looking from like $25 and up. And then on the other side of it would be 2501 through 2599. And those are people looking from $15 to $25, okay? And so you're gonna find just this little narrow band of products that other people aren't specifically looking at, all right? So let's just do a search and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, again, these are different search results here. Okay, so that's one way to differentiate how you're doing product research. And beyond that, what I like to do too is setting a minimum revenue and listing quality. So typically the profit margins on private label products is anywhere around 30 to 50%. And if you're aiming for $3,000 profit per month, then you need to find products that are generally around $6,000 in total revenue per month and up. Okay, so let's just say I set it to 10,000 here and the listing quality is how Jungle Scout has ranked their listings as far as how optimized they've made it, okay? And it's a score out of 10. So I'd like to look for listings that have poor qualities of let's say a maximum of six, okay? And let's just do a search here. And again, you'll see it's pulling up different products, okay? And now there's only 300 different listings showing here, all right? And again, you can adjust the price range to look at different areas in the marketplace. So now that I've shared with you a couple of secrets with changing the different search criteria, I wanna point out that this is why it's super important that you understand and learn what each of these different filters mean and what they're doing as part of the search. So instead of just copying numbers that you've seen online, if you learn what each of these filters mean and how they affect the search results, you can tailor your search to look at specific areas in the Amazon marketplace and strategically find products that meet your specific indi individual needs. Now, another method I like to use is where instead of just looking at the first level of search results, you drill down deeper and find products that are related to the original product that you found. And for a lack of a better name, I call it the inception method. And I'll show you what I mean. So if we go back to the Jungle Scout database, for example, if we were to do a search and let's just say we find a product that has some potential that met our original search criteria. Um, so if we look down here, and again, you wanna find products that are unique and a little bit out of the ordinary, and you wanna stay away from products that are patented, trademarked, and products that are novelty or gag items, okay? so. Let's just see if I can find something real quick that catches my eye. Okay, what's this? Uh, blind wine tasting bag, gift bags. That's pretty unique and out of the ordinary. So what would the broadest keyword be for this? Wine tasting gift bags, I'm gonna guess. Okay, let's just do all departments, see what we get. That looks correct. Wine tasting gift bag. And let's run Jungle Scout, the Chrome extension. And you have to have a Chrome extension tool. I like to use a Jungle Scout one to do efficient product research. Without one, there's no way to analyze the data within the niche quickly and efficiently. You'll be sitting there forever trying to gather information for each niche that you're trying to analyze. Whereas at a glance, I can tell with a tool whether or not this niche is good or not. Okay, so if we're looking at this one, you can see the price point is above $15. Sales is not that great. It's uh, inconsistent here, okay? So, but the competition is good. 
at least seven of the top 10 have less than 75 reviews. Okay, so at a glance I can see that this is not a good niche, but it doesn't mean I can't use the inception method on this, okay? So what I mean by that is you dive deeper in this related product. So if we go back to this listing, there's several ways you can go about this. The first one that I like to do is look at the store himself because he obviously he has one product that met our original search criteria. Perhaps he has others. So let's look at his store and we can see what other products they have. This seller only has uh, six products, okay? And if you didn't know already, a pro tip here is you can run the Chrome extension on a storefront. So if I go and click the Chrome extension and run it, it's gonna give me data on their products in their store, okay? And I can see here that he has another one here, the Stone Pebble that does pretty well, that sells 400 units a month, okay? Stone Pebble Soap Dish. So let's just take a look at it real quick. Now Stone Pebble Soap Dish isn't the correct keywords and I know that because uh, from my product research experience, remember you gotta use the correct, shortest, broadest keywords when you're analyzing a niche, okay? So the correct keyword phrase for this is gonna be simply Soap Dish. So if I look for that, I can tell already it's probably gonna be way too competitive. And uh, if we run the Chrome extension, you can see that it is. It's way too competitive and the price point is too low. Okay, so now another way to do the inception method is to come down here and look at related products, frequently bought together area, and customers who bought this also bought this section. Here's where we can find a bunch of great product ideas that are related to that original product, okay? Now, and come down here, you can just kind of scroll through and see if there's anything here that also catches your eye. Um, and for me, I'm not really seeing anything that's out of the ordinary. Uh, photo booth props, maybe? Let's take a look at that. And that one was related to wine tasting, but remember you want to use the correct broadest keyword phrase. In this case, it would just be photo booth props. Okay, I can tell you right now, this is related to like party decorations and stuff. And personally, I believe that this niche is saturated. So regardless of what this says, I personally wouldn't get into it. Um, the price point is a little bit low, but you could probably bundle a bit more to raise the price point up a bit. Uh, monthly sales isn't too bad and the reviews, it's not too competitive. Okay. So by the numbers, this is an okay niche, but for me, because it's related to party decorations, I personally wouldn't get in on it. All right. So now you can go back to the photo booth props and perhaps look for another product to lead you down another path. And this is why I call it the inception method because you're going another level deeper and deeper each time you're doing another search. And so the deeper you go, the farther you get from the original product that you found in the web app, right? So the farther you go down that path, the farther away potentially you'll be from the products that other people are seeing. And lastly, one of my favorite methods is what I call the letter method. And this is the method I used to find my most recent product that I'm selling on Amazon. And I actually found another product that I revealed in another video here using that exact same method. You should go check it out if you wanna see the exact process. Now, what do I mean by letter method? All you need here is to jump onto Amazon and in the search bar, type in random letters. So what I like to do is either start from the beginning with letter A or start with backwards with the letter Z, or you can do random, whatever floats your boat for that day. So for example, if I were to start with letter A, I'll type that in and I'll use the autocomplete that Amazon provides and see if there's anything that catches my eye. So if we look down here and know that all of these are either uh, patented or trademarked, so I'm not gonna do any of these ones, but I can add a second letter and arbitrarily pick one. It doesn't really matter and see if anything catches your eye. Athletic tape, Atkins shakes. Um, athletic tape, maybe, let's take a look. Okay, and then I'll run the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. 
And again, it's too competitive. And, uh, and it looks like it's brand dominated by Mueller and Hampton. Okay, so that's, that's a no. So let's go back over here and go A, T and continue. Maybe add another T. Or pick a different letter. Um, And you can kind of see what catches your eye, right? It really doesn't uh, matter. Just pick something, a weighted blanket. What's that? See, that caught my eye right away. So let's take a look at a weighted blanket. Interesting. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, again, right off the bat, it's too competitive. Price is really good. Sales is really good, but it's, it's way too competitive. Okay, so that's a no. But... Uh, Again, another way to do it too is maybe you like one of the keywords, you can keep it and add words that following it. Okay, so we'll keep weighted and then you can look down here and see uh, a weighted vest. What's that? It's probably for the gym or something. Um, and I tend to stay away from gym equipment because they're pretty saturated and uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be too competitive as well or it could be patented, and yeah, it's way too competitive. Okay, let's see what else do we have here. A weighted straw cup, what's that? Okay, there's a baby sippy cups. Okay, I'm gonna run the Jungle Scout numbers here, and you can see that it is also too competitive, and the sales is, well, sales drops off pretty quick here, and the price point is borderline too low, okay? You can see here that that's another great example of how you can find different product ideas by just tweaking the way that you do your product research. And again, if you wanna know more about what these product research tools are, I'll leave links to it in the description. Now, the intent of this video wasn't to actually do the product research. I'm just showing you the product research methods that I used to actually find products that I am selling in Amazon. And I hope it goes to show you that if you just think outside the box a little bit, you can find different ways to see products that no one else is seeing by lowering your risk of getting into a niche that can potentially get saturated. Let me know in the comments if you've been doing product research just like everyone else, or if you've been bitten by this and ended up with a bad product. I'd like to hear your horror stories and what you've learned from your mistakes. All right, thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. And to make sure you never miss a video, click that bell icon to turn on notifications. There's also a link in the description to our community forums, which you should totally join. And if you're looking for more tips and strategy videos, click or tap over here. And as always, thanks for watching.